Hello everyone, it's May Larson here and we're back with another tutorial. Okay, so for this tutorial we're going to be working with this wood box that I picked up at um, Michael's and it was $5.99 and don't forget to use your coupon. It's, it's one of those openable, opens up and it has like a little uh, magnetic thing right there so that it'll close. Um, now I do know that when I was going through all the ones in the shelf there were some that were warped so you gotta make sure that the wood is not warped um, for this project so that's important but please do use your coupon it was $5.99 a piece which is not a bad deal actually considering it's it is wood now this is what I did I took an inexpensive gesso doesn't have to be an expensive gesso just an inexpensive prime your wood once you do that, you're going to take your Liquitex or any modeling paste that you have. And um, we did this little technique with um, my wood cross. Just kind of give it a little whipping, um, you know, brush stroke onto your box. Um, once you do that, you have like this little nice textured on it. Um, I want to give it like a leather almost feel to this wood box and I did it all the way around see that now once you have that it's got a little bit of a crackle I love that because I want it to look old and I want it to look really vintage so let your modeling paste um, dry up now what I did is I came back with my folk art chalk paint I apply the inside and out with the chalk paint. Now I did not do the modeling paste on the inside as you can see. I was very careful to go around the edges here so that my box opened and closed. Now here on the sides, this here I applied some modeling paste. Now if you go to Michaels, you can buy this online, it's a comb. Um, and you can also, if you don't have this, take a um, old fork. I will not use a good, you know, one of your normal everyday usage or maybe a plastic fork. But take a fork, an old comb. Um, I don't really use combs here, but you can use an old fork or whatever. And you can get the same feel. So what you're going to do, you will apply, once you have your gesso, you will apply your molding piece onto the side. Once it's on there, you're going to take your um, your comb or your um, fork or whatever and just run it through like that. And then you'll get that effect on the side. You see that effect? That's to make it look like there's pages there. Okay? All right. Once you have it all dried up and you put your chalk paint on now you're gonna come in with your buttercream and I love this I can't express how much I love it I love it so much that this is the only one I always use um, for my projects now now this is where um, we're gonna go in here we're gonna um, apply this and again you don't want a really thick thick coat of this you just want to get in here really well and apply your wax because what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to stain this and give it a really old vintage leatherly leatherly oh my Lord, oh my God. if it isn't it is now we're going to give it an old look okay and then we're going to start decorating it which is the best part you know um i'm going to use some ornate wood to give it a nice touch to it I don't know we just don't know what's gonna happen here but I want to do something funky and of course you guys know I use these for my home decors um, for my house and wood boxes are very very expensive if you go to, like to Hobby Lobby um, and checking to see where I've missed a spot go to Hobby Lobby in those places they have these decorative wood boxes but they're so expensive so the fact that I was able to go in and purchase this wood box for $5.99 when I know a decorative one from Hobby Lobby and notice I don't put too much on my paintbrush I just wanted to give it a really nice quick dry so that it dries up really fast I don't want if it if you put too much 
on here, it's going to take forever. A little bit goes one way, it takes forever to dry, and it's going to be sticky and gummy, and we don't want that. We want to be able to apply our stain and do what we need to do without it being sticky or anything like that. So, not a whole lot. I know I've missed a little couple spots here, and I want to get into those little grooves and crevices. Um, so I'm not putting a whole lot on my paintbrush because I just want to be able to get in here and do what I need to do and out. Okay. All right. I'm going to do that. And there is a lot of crackling effect and I'm, I can't wait to see what that really looks like once we get it. Get to use your sides. Get those sides done. Get those crevices really done because... I want some of the stain to seep into those little crevices. Okay. And I might put an image here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna, you know, this is this is um we're winging it. Maybe winging it, ladies. I'm not like winging things. You know, who doesn't? very lightly. Not putting a whole lot on my brush. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. It's kind of fun to make, be able to do your own home decor. I love doing, being able to do my own stuff and, you know, put my spin on things. I love that kind of stuff. It gives you something to talk about. Someone comes to your house and they say, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, you know what? I did that. It gives you something to talk about, right? So we're going to keep working along, get this all nice and pretty. My lining in here is not the best, so I have a hard time seeing, making sure. I don't understand. I got the daylights, I got the LED lights, I got everything in here, and it's just not, it just does not work for me. Thinking about maybe moving the the desk over a little bit where I have more, where I'm not in a corner. Maybe the corner is what's giving me this um, shadowing problem. Who knows? I don't know. Let me sure you get in these here. Really good. Because remember, we got to um, stain up. Let's do a side. Oh, I already did the side, didn't I? I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Okay. Uh, see how fast I forget. I have short term memory. I forget things really fast. Okay. I should be checking getting that light a little bit closer so that I can see because I don't want to miss a spot. It's important you don't miss any. You cover it completely and because we've gone in and we've done um, textured on here, um, i got to make sure you get into those little grooves and crevices. Every little Nick and Danny in there. Get it nicely covered. I might have some pieces of the modeling paste falling off because you know, it's just dragging along, but just notice I'm doing really light strokes because I don't want really heavy amount. I want this to dry up fast, if you know what I mean. It's just 
a small brush stroke. I'm just like carefully doing it. And when you're putting on your modeling paste on here, what you can think about doing is that you're, you know, when you're doing cakes, icing your cakes, you know, you're taking your spatula and you're just giving it a little bit of a swirl and, you know, whatever. That's what you're thinking you're doing when you're doing this. So just think about that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab. Kind of give it a little bit of a boost here. Speed up some of this drying process because you need to do the inside as well. So we'll. All right. So already. And we're going to begin by, I like to use my most grungiest um, paint brushes for this because I don't want to use my good paint brushes. Um, so I'll use one of my really not so good paint brushes. I'm going to use this one. Let's wet it a little bit. It's a little wet. I want to use something that's good that I can use for my painting. All right. And I have a handy dandy baby wipe. This makes it easier to wipe Get into those crevices really, really good. And you just wipe it. See that? Or you want more of the stain? go in there and so this is going to be a slower process um, because where I want more of the stain I'm going to go in but you see that nice and with the wet cloth of the baby wipe it gives it a washout look I really like that but in these little crevices I want some really nice distressing get those corners really really good now what's sticking there something red Looks like foamy. My daughter was messing with foamy. Okay, so get that really, really good. And that's why it's important you use a really old um, paintbrush. See that? And then you can give it a really nice washed out look. And then just kind of get it where you want more of the um, stain to pop out. I really want to do it a lot and you can take a sand block and you know um, sand off some corners and things like that I need to get in here and get a sandpaper for my sand block I don't know what I did with them I put it away so well in my process of cleaning things I have no idea where I could have put them so I'm going to have to hit Lowe's tomorrow which is alright because I wanted to get another being for Lowe's for another project that I want to do with you guys. All right, so in these little, you know, inventions and grooves and knickknacks and whatever, you want to get it really, really good in there. And that's why it's really good, see that? That you use a baby wipe because you get really in there and it spreads really nicely. And Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is gorgeous. Look at that. I love the look. So I'm just going to go in deeper where I want it really deep and rich with that textured appearance that it's old and rugged and, you know, make it look like something really old. That's what I love about this. I love, love, love. Like right here, you know, where all your wear and tears are in those little grooves. And they're really good. You let it sit for a couple minutes and then just go back in. Let's sit for a little bit and then we'll come in. And we're just going to get that really good. I 
and someone was asking me what is the mat that I use. I use this is my craft mat. Um, it's a Ranger craft mat. Um, I don't know if I think her name was Trish that asked me. Um, so I don't know if this it was this mat you wanted info on or my pink silicone mat, which is a plaid mat. And um, um, see that. Love it, um, but if it's the plaid mat, you can purchase those at Walmart.com. Um, I want that. I want that stone leathery look touch to it. Um, if it's my Ranger, you can purchase that one on just about any. You can go to Amazon. I know Amazon doesn't have the plaid one. Um, they have they have one. It's a Mod Podge one. It's not. It's it's it doesn't have the tools. The one I have came with a seven piece tool. Um, see that? My gorgeous. Um. So. If you want the seven piece tool, you would have to order that one from Walmart. I don't know who else. I haven't seen anyone else carry that. And I know when I when I own Creative Details, I used to have it, but that was like a long time ago. And then the supplier distributor didn't carry it anymore. So you have to get it directly from Plaid. I don't even know if Plaid has it. So you might want to check the Plaid online store. It's a seven piece craft tool mat. Um, get in there, get it in, get it in. Get it really nice and rich in there. It's a world of a difference. Can you tell how much of a difference it is from it being that wood box Oops. to being this little piece? I want to get in there and make it really old and vintage. Notice I'm using the same dirty baby wipe. And you can wipe up as much as you want. I'm doing a little bit of a pounding on it because I want a really nice distressed look on there. It gives more character, I think. Okay. See that? Isn't that beautiful. It's gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to do the back. Again, I haven't changed it. change my um, baby wipe so we're just kind of keep working with that dirty grungy baby wipe just work that in I'm putting a big amount of this and just work in smaller sections of you um, especially around these little corners you want to make sure you get it really nice because that's where your typical wear and tears all right, that's where you pick up, you know, typically in a book. You can see some of that crackling. It's gorgeous. In a really old world look. I see a lot of these, and I have a lot in my house. 
um, have books and things like that. And um, typically I've gotten it from Hobby Lobby, but I wait till they are like 50% because otherwise they're really expensive. And I price them at um, Home Goods Store, I think it's called. Um, they're not cheap. They aren't. But, you know, you can make your own. It looks yum. I love it when things come out like this. This is my cup of tea. This is what I love to do. I really do. I love home decor and I love making beautiful pieces for my home. Priceless. You can't go into a store and find these kind of pieces. You know? You really can't. Now, it's really grungy, so now we're really going to toss that one and grab another one. And for these kind of projects, I suggest you get really, in, you know, cheap wavy wipes. These are like $1.89 at Walgreens. See, I like to. I want some of that grunginess. Don't want too much of the washout. So throw it back in. Because my rag is not that dirty. So it washed out some. So that's why it's important if you want a really grungy grungy. Make sure. Good. Now this is what I said it looks like your pages, remember? So it looks like it's actual pages. Get in there, all those little crevices, and then make sure you get it really in so you don't want to leave anything out. Okay, and then just go in and wipe it. See how those pages look like? Look like real pages. Get it really good seeped in there. Okay. 
Let's sit for a couple minutes if you want so that you can get really nice deep colors in you. Now, I'll go in and wipe. And we want to wipe. On the other side, leave some to be more exposed to the natural colors. Yeah. Okay, don't. All right, that's the outside. Now let's go on the inside. Now the inside, I didn't put any of the um, paste or anything like that because I wanted to make sure that this box closed and sealed. So that's important. You put too much paste on the um, lid, you're not going to be able to get it to seal. So keep that in mind. Make sure you clean it out. Make sure you don't get anything on the lids to keep it from closing. Looks like now now it looks there like it's wood, but the outside looks like it's not. And you can put a picture in the inside. Whatever you want. I'm not gonna do too much in the inside because it's gonna always be closed, you know. It's not gonna it's gonna it's a decorative box. It's not decor. And here I'm going with the natural strokes of the grain of the wood so that it's not too contrasting. I have enough juice on my um, rag or my baby wipe. Let's see, I can just go right in there. Just go on the edges. Darker. Okay. 
You can go back if you want to touch up where you want more darker shades. You can do that. Where you feel that it needs a little bit more tender, loving touch. I'll let that sit for a little bit and then we'll be back. Okay, for the next part of um, our tutorial, we're going to get these little metal filigrees that you can purchase at Creating with Details. And these are brass plated. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my favorite chalk paint, which is the um, cheap skin. And I'm just gonna just already have like a primer type base on it. Um, and what I like about these is that um, you can distress them and apply paint to them, do whatever you want with them, and change the appearance of these. Um, So you don't have to particularly go with the brass. Right. We're going to go and change that one and then I'm going to nuke it up a little with, um, of course, our handy dandy heat gun. I was about to say hot glue but it's the heat gun. Let's get that right May. Heat gun. And I think I'm going to start using like freezer sheets. I really hate secret ladies. I hate cleaning off this mat every single time I use it. I have to clean it. So I think I'm going to start buying some freezer sheets and use that because that's disposable and my OCD. I know ladies I do have OCD. I admit to that. It's not going to get to me. But you know, after you've crafted for a little bit and you're so tired because you just did a tutorial and it took you forever, um, and then you had to clean up after yourself, it's kind of like, oh, I really don't want to craft because then I have to clean up after myself. And I don't want to do that either. Um, but you guys know how that is. Right now I do have a mess in my craft room because I was crafting. Okay, so we're going to do another layer. And you know what? I'm just going to use, put that in there. I'm going to use this little handy dandy sponge thingy to dab. Makes it easier. Get in there really good. And I do apologize for my wobbly little desk. This thing is a pain in the oh, booty. We're going to do this and then we're going to nuke it and then we're going to take some Gilder's paste. I was thinking about putting some crackle in here. Wouldn't that be nice? I might put some crackling effect on here. Um, but we'll see how this turns out. We're going to play with it. Okay, ladies. It's playtime. Playtime in May's craft room. But I really like the way my book's coming out. It looks really old. Does not look like it's wood underneath all that craziness. I'm going to like different things in my home, so that's just my personal touch to it. Alright, oops, there goes a flying. Alright, we got plenty in there. Let's put that in there. Let's rinse that out. Let's rinse this out. I know. OCD. To the max. I 
Put it in your kit. And again, you can purchase these filigrees from Creating with Details. They're um, unplated brass. And you can also make jewelry pieces out of these. They're really, really neat. Really, really neat. But you can also use, if you have um, a dresser you're working on, this would be cute as one of your dresser drawer full things. Really, really neat. And very, very thick and sturdy. All right, so I'm going to go and play with a little bit of crackle. I'm going to run my handy little card over here. And I need to buy more crackle. I've had this for a while. So we're going to go in here. Apply some of this crackle. And then we're going to let that sit. And then we'll come back and see what that looks like. We're going to play around. Oh. Play around. It's on my desk. Something's crawling on here. Play around and see how this looks. I think it'll look good on the book. I don't know about you guys, but I think it would. All right, so let's let that set. Clean my brush there for a bit. Let's let that set. Let's let that dry up, and then we'll be back. All right, ladies. See you back in a bit. Okay, so we're back, and it's dried up. Now we're going to do, I've nuked it. I'm going to take this um, refreshing deco art chalky finish. I'm going to do this one. But I thought my book needed a little bit of a color. So we're going to go in with this and see what crackle effect we get in here. I think it would be neat to see that. I don't know. I should have pounced it with my little thingy. but um, I'm going to go in here with some gilder's paste. And hit it here and there to get a really old rusty look. And we're going to... My lighting here is horrendous, ladies. Y'all know this already. It's no secret. It's horrible here. And I'm just pouncing. Typically, I don't re recommend that you go over, but because this has got a lot of delicate details in here, I want to make sure I get into every little nick and cranny. All right. Let's hope that this works. If it doesn't, oh well. I'll do something else. We'll go to step number two, right? Okay. Don't see too many cracks on that. It might have been because I pounced it. We shall see. All right. Clean brush. Cover up. I'm learning, Miss Penny. I'm learning. Okay. Let's nuke it. Let's nuke that baby. It's coming in there. Crackle's coming in. It looks really rusty. I like that rustic look. Gives it a really nice patina, rusty look. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in there with some brass colors and just kind of hit it up here and there. And I like that. It looks kind of like rust. Once I get me green this up, because it's going to be hotter than heck. You can 
can see that. Whoops, I don't want to touch it. You probably can't see all those details. Maybe you want to hit with um, the gilder's paste. It'll pick up more of that rusty kind of look to it. Okay, so I'll let that cool up and we have this Gilder's paste. We have it in rust. And you can purchase these at Creative with Details. And that is really I have to wet that up a little. We'll see how that works. Or we can try. Let's probably do the. These babies get really hot. All right, let's do this one first and see how this goes. Yeah, I like the. I'm more prone to the brass. Giving those little details. And it brings in all those intricate. You can brush this up with some Pearl X and get a really nice feel to it as well. All right. I don't know, the lighting here is not very helpful. I don't know, you can see that. Probably not, but you'll see when I get, when it's daylight and you can see the pictures. All right, so that's the difference between this one's not done with Gilder's Pace, and this one is. So you see the difference? There we go, good clear. There we go. There's a big difference. I'm going to try seeing if this rusty stuff, how that works on here. See, this is one that I have not used for some reason. It did not come in good. Manufacture defect. But you see that? Even with the water touches in there, and you can come back in with like a um, if you want, not in a sec. I'm gonna go in with my paintbrush here. If you want, um, you can come in here. I'm gonna go in here with a varnish or clear nail polish. Um, you know. And seal it up. I pretend, I, I not pretend, I prefer that rusty, grungy, that's just my personal pre preference, ladies. I just like it like that. Get in there really good. Yeah. So there's a difference between this one and this one, and I'm loving this one. And basically, it's going to sit right there, and I love it. It looks really patina. So let's go back in. This one, the brass, and kind of get those areas really good. And then we'll follow through with the rust. See the difference between how this one looks? This one looks really old and vintage, and this one, not so much. I like the old and vintage look. I'm 
let's decorate that. Patina. It's not Patina, it's Gilder's Paste Rust. And you can purchase these at Creating with Detail. She has all of these available. And what I like to do is I like to heat set it a little with the the glue, um, glue gun. Yeah, there I go again. What is up with me? I, I don't think I've used my glue gun enough. I have a, uh, Vanessa with me. So say hi, Vanessa. Hello, everyone. She's with me crafting here. Listening to my crazy panics. And uh, probably laughing at me. Because I want to say glue gun for some reason. And I, I think I'm having glue gun withdrawals, maybe. I don't know. Let's see, do they? I think it's the glue gun withdrawals. Enough moves. Okay, so that is that. Let's wipe our hands. Yes, we wipe our hands. <laughs> we wipe our hands. So this is the bronze, and this is the Gilder's Paste Rust, and you can purchase these at Creative Details. Okay. And look, it's not turquoise. It's actually, it's it's almost like a teal aqua. All right. But it looks rusty and patina. I like that. All right. Clean up, clean up. All right. That's why baby wipes were made. An expensive way to clean ourselves while we're crafting. All right. <sighs> Done. Bring our box in. And this is what I was thinking about doing. Is we're going to lay this in. This is a vintage image. Not vintage, but an image I purchased from Etsy. And it's printed on fabric. So I was thinking about putting that there. Wouldn't that be lovely? And then I'm going to put some trim here. So I'm going to go look and shop around in my craft room for some um, a trim or something pretty we can put here. And we'll be back. Okay. So we've gone ahead. We've nuked these with the heat gun. And here's my image. And then I have this. Um, I got this from Hobby Lobby. It's a canvas frayed ribbon. And it was $2.99, but I paid it at 50% off. But what I was thinking of doing is placing her behind... I like this frayed look, and I didn't want to cut out a big piece of fabric, or if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out two pieces at the length of this so that I have the frayed look on both sides. I'm going to go a little bit shabby here and play with my glue gun. I think my glue gun is having a withdrawal. I just want it to the same length of the picture because we have, I just want to see that frayed look there. And then I have some of this here. And I'm just going to go shabby it up a little. Just a little, just a little, ladies. Pull some of these strands out here. And we're probably going to have to pull the wire. It is a wire ribbon. I'm just figuring out, ladies. We're just playing right now. Let's go a little bit closer. I 
and that's gonna go like right there. I'll go down a little bit more. Just go in there. And that's gonna go here. And then what I was thinking about the sides. And so we're gonna go like that. Okay? That's what I like. Alright, let's go for it. Let's see. Placement looks good. Just a little centered. Look, we're going to use the glue gun. Just gonna try to keep it in place best I can. What are you working on, Vanessa? I'm just opening up a little lantern. I was having some withdrawals. You sure it's the glue gun and not you? Yeah, I would think it was a glue gun, not me. Okay, so now we have that. And that's. Think, I think I enjoy not having the glue webs though. Because now that I see all these little glue webs on my desk, it's like, oh my god, they're back. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna go there. And we're gonna go here. Yeah, I don't think I missed the glue webs at all. I don't think any of us missed that. Look at this, I just got glue webs on my desk. And I haven't had any. Alright. And you can probably put some cheesecloth also if you don't have the burlap put in the back. Cheesecloth works great. Right. All right. Minus all my glue webs. I am happy. Just don't like the glue webs. All right. So we're going to put that here. using the right scissors to cut trim. That just tells you that I haven't been cutting too many laces. And I don't even have the right glue um, scissors on my desk for, for lace. Wow, man. Make sure that is straight. Tim Holtz is not good at all for um, 
what do you call that? Okay, we're going to use this quick grip glue for the metal though. Um, I would prefer this than E6000 for sure. But because you have all those little really deep grooves in there, you got to get really good chunks amount of glue in here. down on that baby so that we don't lose it. Get any glue seeping through, just kind of wipe it up. Okay. Let's do the other part. We're coming close to an end. It's really neat when you do these. Do you put decorative books in your house, Vanessa? Uh huh. I'll be decorating some more pretty soon. What are you decorating? As soon as I get my old and new craft rooms together. We'll be decorating up my living room. You haven't finished moving your craft room yet? No, I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff in the old one. I've already donated, what, nine boxes to the schools already? Mm. So they're going to have three more coming. Yeah, I kind of need to go through that other room that I had some junk in it and purge it out. Too. You gotta press down on this metal so that it adheres to your fabric but also to the wood so you're not losing it halfway. So we'll probably have to let say sit some some heavy books on here. <clears throat> let it sit for a couple hours and then we'll be back and work on it. Okay, so we are back and this is a wanna scrap frame. I will put the link below so you can see this frame. You can purchase it there. And I've distressed it with my chalk paint and I'm gonna go ahead and just glue it down. Um, on top of that, kind of plain like that to me. Um, so I wanted to give it more. I don't know. I thought that looked pretty to me. See, nice and pretty. And what I'm going to do on the side now, there is um, Creative Details has some unplated uh, brass that you can put one here. Um, and that would be really cute. Um, but another idea is that I have this little charm here. Since I'm going to probably have this sitting on an easel. Sitting like that on an easel. I'm just going to apply that like that. And I'm going to go ahead um, and use my quick dry because I really want this to dry up. And I'm going to go ahead and get even this part in and here so that it stays more dirt, more sturdier. Make sure I get plenty of that there. Set that on the side. 
And again, you can put um, anything on the side, really. You know, it doesn't have to be. Um, we're going to let that sit for a little bit, a couple hours, and then I'll be back. And I'll take pictures of it so you guys can see. I didn't want too much frou frou stuff, but if I wanted, I could have put a flower. And I have, for instance, I have this little flower here. Um, I could have put that there, and I might put that there. Um, I think it looks pretty. And since it's going to be angled on an easel, making sure that stays there. Um, and I'll probably put one of the Wanna Scrap Pearl blings right there. Um, that would look really cute, just like that. And I'll probably have some little dangling tassel. And so you will see that. So what I'm going to do, this is just um, a little flower you can pick up at um, Michael's. However, you can just cut some little circles out, and I've done these before. Um, and they're satins, and you can cut them out in circles and put them randomly around and make a little flower. I'll do a tutorial on how to do these, but I had this one laying around and I found it and I thought, you know what, let's use what I have here. Um, and there is a tutorial I have on how to make these, but this is not mine, this is from my collection. But anyway, I thought that there and then maybe some little um, beaded tassels to go in there. Make sure that stays, I'm trying to make sure that stays. And I'm gonna put a little one of scrap pearl right there um, and I think that would be really, really cute, angled up like that on, um, on an easel. And then you can, you know, you don't have to store anything in there. Um, you can also, an idea, another idea is you can get an old, and I probably do that with my other book box, um, is get some old belts and wrap it around, tie it, and maybe put a little, you know, latch on here but we'll see what I do differently with the other one but anyway that is just food for thoughts um, on how to do this one anyway till next time bye bye all right I said I was done but I found this trim it's a beaded rhinestone uh, trim and I thought that I would outline the outside of um, this frame here with it so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do the inside part and to be really careful with this and go slow oops okay, I can't see what I'm doing and I didn't put any glue there alright, hey, that's wonderful All right. We're just going to go around this outside part. I thought it'd give it more of a different appeal to this frame. You might want to use like the quick dry on here. Um, I'm just running low on it, so I don't know I'll have enough, but you might want to do that. I'll just go slow because it is kind of tedious. Try to go with that glue web. See, she, she, she. I was missing the glue webs, ladies. Sure, if it gets a little bit off, just nuke it up with your heat gun and just place it, take a tweezer and place it back in. And it's a little off center. I 
which I can see right there. I'm going to have to go in with my heat gun. Just warm it up a little. And move the rhinestone just a bit. And these are chain links, so they kind of adjust a little. They're movable. And I know I'm speaking really low, but everyone's sleeping here, so... Let's clip that. Now I got that um, chain from um, Hobby Lobby. So if you're interested, you'll have to go over there and get that rhinestone chain from there. Okay, right here I can tell I need to maybe take my heat gun or maybe I can heat it up a little. With the... There we go. All right. I'm content with that. Okay, so that's what we have. Isn't that gorgeous? And then we put the little flower there, and I took some of that yarn and put it there. And then on the side, um, I put a little pearl. Minus glue webs, you know, we have to go in here and kind of tweak those off. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Any questions, feel free to ask. Bye-bye.